Wow, so much wrestling this week. Sunday, Monday. Oh, wait, today's Tuesday. And you know what that means, folks? My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And if it's Tuesday, it must be time to talk about some SmackDown. So I finally did get my Monday Night Raw review up. Had a little bit of a rant and rave. Felt warranted, though. Um, I did forget one thing. Um, actually, two things. Renee Youngs seems to be on Elias' side. Renee turning heel? Indeed. Um, that, and I forgot to talk about my fast lane predict my no, not fast lane predictions. My Elimination Chamber predictions. So very quickly, I know it was a long show, so I kind of skipped things a little bit. I got wrong because I had Samoa Joe winning, Daniel Bryan retained. I didn't know that. Um, I did choose Banks and Bailey to be the new women's tag team champion. I actually picked Finn Balor to win. That's impressive. Ruby Wright was my Stone Cold lock. She won. The Usos won. I unfortunately chose Miz and Shane. Ron Strowman lost. Again, that was a lousy match anyway. And again, that was a snooze match. I wonder why. And then Buddy Murphy retained. So that means I chose one, two, three, four. No, wait. One. Two, yeah, three, four. Out of one, two, three, five, six, seven. So I was four out of seven. Not bad. Better than a 50 50 booker. That means I am obviously in a McMahon's head. Stephanie McMahon, I know your plans. That's that. Uh, what else is there? Um, I gave my Pedro Morales kind of tribute. Again, he lived a life. It's hard to say. 70s. You get in your 60s and 70s after living the life that he lived. That's the way of the art. The way life goes. It's not meant to live forever. But be interesting. Kind of suck, though. Yeah, still be interesting. Well, let's talk about some SmackDown Live. Let me get away from that speaker. For some reason, this is sounding a lot better. The t shirt. It's the Macho Man shirt, folks. One of my favorite. I think this is my first wrestling shirt I ever got. I like it. So SmackDown starts off with Shane O'Mac kind of going through a couple things. So it was kind of weird. Um, he talked about Kofi Kingston. Gave Kofi Kingston big props for his showing and Elimination Chamber. Again, really the highlight. Um, then talks about the NXT call-ups. Miz comes out. Thanks, Shane. Apologize. Said, you know what? I'm the one that lost. Thank you so much. The Usos then come out. The Usos here called Miz an A-lister with C-list something. But the bigger thing to get out of this is that all four of them, Jimmy, J, Shane, and The Miz, they all play off each other. So it's very organic feeling when they insult each other. It's almost good-natured. And it makes it feel that much more organic. It makes it feel non-scripted. That's a good thing. 
And then we got to our first match of the night. It was Alistair Black versus Andrade. And they still should call him. Oh, yeah, that was this. Oh, my cat like jump behind me. Um, they still should call him Andrade Cien Almas. Or at least Andrade Al Almas. Andrade Cien Almas. And it's kind of weird that Zillian Vega's ringside with Andrade when she's married to Alistair Black. But again, this match had amazing action. I was fully shocked. Especially the fact that I thought Alistair Black tweaked his knee the previous night. Maybe it's just one of those things. You kind of tweak something. Rest it up, ice it up. Next day, you just have to stretch it out, and it's good to go. Happens to everyone. You're going to go fishing one day. Back hurts. Stretch it out. Next day, it's fine. So, again, that happens all the time to everyone. I'm, I'm sure he's a pro, and they probably have a multitude of medical staff, chiropractors, um, real massage therapists. Not the New Orleans Bourbon Street kind. But real massage therapists. And I'm sure they can work wonders. I know when I played football and wrestled, I taped my knee up. I always felt better. It might also be in here, too. Um, Andrade's... Geez, he's a four-star match machine, at least. Every match Andrade Cien Almas is in has really been amazing, whether it's Rey Mysterio. Don't, I, think, I think he actually went against AJ Styles. That was a fun match. Uh, him versus Rey Mysterio was awesome. It's amazing. They still have to get back to that. Even harkening back to his NXT days when he became much more serious with Zelina Vega. All of his matches, I mean, again, some of his matches are were up for a match of the year in a variety of wrestling publications. I want to say it was Almas V. Gargano was one consideration for match of the year. Almas versus Ciampa. Who you drop the belt to? Oh, Alistair Black. Amazing. So, I mean, it's hard to say Almas is not a four star match machine. You could have a three star match versus a broom, which is getting up there. That's starting to get into AJ Styles, AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi territory. That's some pretty elite company to be in, folks. Again, very fast pace. Um, it was it was a good pace. It wasn't fast. It was it slowed down when it had to be slow. It sped up when when again the match called for it. This is one of those matches where it seemed like almost a real fight. It was rough, but smooth though. The action was pretty consistent, and it wasn't. It, it, the thing is, it wasn't boshy. It didn't have that boshy quality to it like, like Ronda Rousey's match did. She, she started up so high, but again, you can only come down, I guess. Um, it had that almost shoot fight feel to it where the two people were really going at each other. But the action was smooth, though. It was consistent. It was rough. But... It flowed. It's it's really hard to describe. It's it's not Bashi though. Um, again, amazing match. I mean, they all hit their big moves. Andrade on the outside of the ring. Ooh, Andrade has can do some nasty stuff out there. That's fun to see. Um, Alistair Black proves he's a mat wrestler. He rolled out of the DDT of the Hammerlock DDT into a pinning submission. He knows his mat wrestling. He's a heavy striker known for that black mask kick. Uh, I'm not a big fan of striking finishers. But he makes it look good. And I'll tell you what, this was a really fun match. 
this is a good surf and turf match. Then we go on to the next match. Um, well, you have a backstage piece with Gargano and Champa. It's still kind of weird to see these two on the same page, but I guess they've they're doing that mainly because of the halftime heat show. And of course, they're confirmed by the bar, 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 bar. And, and uh, past. Oh, I forget the I forget the the interviewer's name, but is this your? Bringing NXT superstar to work today. Champ had a great line. We're not here to set the bar. We're here to break the bar. That was good. Them be fighting words. So it was a pretty good promo by both. Um, the match started off with uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Sheamus in the ring. Something teed off Tommaso Ciampa. I don't know if... Seamus was going a little stiff or, or shooting on him. But Seamus did something Ciampa didn't like. And Ciampa let Seamus know. Because he got him out of the... He, he kicked him out of the ring and he kept on rubbing his jaw. And there was sometimes... You, you do make contact and... <sighs> Sometimes you might even just bite your cheek. I know I've done that a couple times. In wrestling matches, you get hit so hard, you get comped on. Like, this isn't supposed to happen. I don't think it was anything made. It's not like anything broken or, or anything. But it was one of those things where it was a little snug. Yeah. And he let Seamus know about that. He's like, eh, eh, eh. Not happening. I mean, Champa, when he comes down to the ring, though, he looks so good the way he just cradles that belt in his arms like like you'd have to pry it out of his, his from his corpse, from the cold, dead corpse or something. Looks good. And it's also unique, too. Oh, that's a quote. I think, Cha I think Chispa's looking out for stray kitty cats. She chased one away last night. Lucky I found her. Um, Seamus had that shock look and he's like, I better let things cool off a little bit. I'm going to tag in Cesaro. Cesaro, and then of course, Ciampa tagged in Johnny Gargano because Cesaro called for it. Cesaro was a darn good wrestler. He began to mock Johnny wrestling. Cesaro has that mat wrestling. He has that collegiate freestyle Greco-Roman skills. You know, very typical of Johnny wrestling. Can I plug this in a little Yeah. Oh, wow. That's weird. Maybe I have to change my phone. Feedback. Maybe. There we go. That sounds better. Oh, yeah. That's a lot better. I think. I don't know if I do this too often. Those weird, goofy things. Again, this is a hobo setup. But um, Cesaro is just so good. He's amazing. You can tell that even though the announcer said, oh, well... They don't have the experiences that the bar does. I'd like to say, and eh, eh, my friend, as DIY, they do a lot of tag team work. They do a lot of tandem tag team work. They do good double teams. Again, they understand basic tag team wrestling. Again, back from when they were they were hashtag DIY. Now it's just dark hashtag DIY, which I which is what I like better. Um, again, they have the tag team work. It just felt like they were DIY again. I mean, and there was amazing tag team action by both teams. Both the bar and DIY understand how to conduct a tag team match. Uh, ring isolation, double teams when called for. You distract the referee, the other guy gets his punches in. Um, the only thing, there was one botch. Ooh. And it was nasty and scary because Tomasa Ciampa was going to be hit with a white noise by Sheamus on top rope. He reversed that into like a Phoenix power bomb, which is when he does the sunset flip from the top rope and brings him down, except for his braced knee kind of buckled and got caught underneath Sheamus. And you can tell that hurt. Listen, that brace is metal. That brace is metal with a reason. And the knee is bone. 
bone on bone hurts. My knee, and the, if you're falling on my knee and your spine, you're going to hurt, I'm going to hurt. Hurt forever. Ouch. Ouchie. That just looks like... It, and it, it could be a very simple thing. It could have been a very simple, oops, I slipped. It was a slick spot. Happens all the time. It's that kind of one thing. This also, <laughs> whenever <laughs> Chiampa got involved with Sheamus, it felt like his shoe. And I'm like, oh, wow. This is a fight feel. Again, minus that one move, when I say shoot, it, it wasn't Bashi. It wasn't, it was, it was rough. The action was smooth. It wasn't botchy. But you're like, oh, wow. That, they had some good stuff going. Oh, and previously in the previous match, they had the yay boos going, which is always fun. Um, my question to you out there in YouTube world. I know Cesaro wrestled in the indies for a long time. He wrestled in Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Chikara. Oh, what's the other one? <clears throat> There's some other one. And it's like the rich millionaire guy. I forget, and I'll have to take a look, if Cesaro ever faced the psycho killer Tommaso Ciampa in Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Chikara. Don't think he was in Ring of Honor. I forget, though. Maybe really early. I mean, Gargano is such a smooth wrestler. Um, again... They're so good. They, they do get the roll up, which leads me to believe that 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 knee was unintentional. That knee at the back was unintentional, but just kind of a screwy thing. Overall, though, I can't complain because this is still a surf and turf match. And then um, it's a little promo, a little video package for Ricochet. And then really like the low point of the night was Asuka versus Mandy Rose. Who's ready for, for Asuka? Mandy Rose comes out. And there are rumors that they're trying to push Mandy Rose. I mean, Mandy Rose does have the Daytona Beach Bumfight League wrestling bestest girlfriend ever belt. But it's tranquil on Mandy Rose. I can't really say that much bad about her. It's 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 Boo Sonya Deville. Mandy Rose, I'm kind of neutral about. So Mandy Rose challenges Oscar. She's like, Boo hoo! It's all about Oscar. Oscar said it should be all about Oscar. Oscar's amazing. I think Oscar actually beat Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Was that the Iconics? That, I think it was both. She beat it one time. Um, Mandy Rose is the opportunistic heel because Lacey Evans just like strutted out ringside and just strutted. And that confused Asuka. Who was it that destroyed Lacey Evans once? Oh, that was Nikki Cross. <laughs> Nikki Cross destroyed Lacey Evans once in, in NXT. That was good. Oscar's probably destroyed Lacey Evans too a few times. They they were in NXT together. Well, I'm sure she destroyed Lacey Evans more than a few times actually. But because of Lacey Evans' distraction, Mandy Rose got the advantage. However, once she once things slowed down and Oscar began to regain her composure. The submission skills of Asuka's unparalleled in the women's division. Um, then there was a, a, a cheap shot. I think Sonya Deville kind of distracted her. Asuka suffers from Seth Rollinitis. She has to be more focused in the ring. And then it was a, it was a cheap heel. Oh, there was a cheap heel sympathy. Oh, she kicked me in the eye. Oh, my eye, my eye. Yeah, and then there was a cheap roll of win. It works, but I saw many, too many cheap heel tactics. 
and it was kind of shortish. And Lacey Evans distractions. It and with Ricochet. Man, he's just amazing looking. I don't care what people say. He faces. He faced Eric Young. Saturday's back. <laughs> I need strobe light now. Sani's back. So Eric Young was there. Um, Eric Wolf was outside. And Killian Dane, Big Dane, was also outside. Again, congratulations, Killian Dane. He married, I guess. Nick, he, yeah, he married Nikki Cross, but I reported on that a while ago. This was a fun match. Eric Young's a classic brawler wrestler. Um, Eric Young... Has that look, probably not the look, but the body type from a fit 70s, early 80s wrestler. That's his look. And, hey, don't get me wrong, it works for him, though. Rick, so, again, he has that kind of brawler mentality, um, kind of power moves. Again, classic wrestling moves. I mean, nothing too outlandish. Ricochet does the flippy, flippy stuff. And listen, there are... Three... Five... Maybe there are five wrestlers that can match him in the flippy, flippy ways. I mean, Will Osprey... Phoenix, Leo Rush, Sammy Guevara, and the fifth one's eluding me. I know they're from PWG. And I can see him doing flippy, flippy stuff. But I forget the name. So there's five people that can probably match Ricochet. Flippy, flippy style. Eric Young is not one of them. I mean, he was doing things that you almost want to say Alex, Alexander Wolf and Killing the Inner Light. Whoa. Again, he did the top rope European uppercut. Who did the top rope European uppercut? I don't even think Cesaro can do that. Um, he 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 took all the distractions, focus, and did the flippy flippy stuff onto Alex Wolf and I just want to call him Big Damo, but a Killian Dane on the outside, <laughs> jump right back in, do flippy flippy stuff with, with Eric Young. I mean, just ricochet. We're not worth. We're not worthy. So with all that being said, I move too fast and restart this again. Silly camera. Um, Ricochet picked up the win. And this was a really fun match. I mean, he did that 630. And the fact that he can do, pull a match off like this two nights in a row. Whoa. Again, this is a surf and turf match. And then the final and the main event of the evening. Oh, wait, before that. He thought, how did Kevin Owens promo? Kevin Owens, you've lost some weight, my main man. Good for you. It's going to be a lot soon. This face is going to get a little bit thinner, a little thinner too. But you can tell because he looks thin in the face. He looks, he looks fit. I know the WWE wrestlers, it's a, it's a hard road lifestyle because you really don't have that many options for, I guess, healthy eating. Um, you can't eat Subway all the time, 
and cheeseburgers will just kill you. So will Jimmy John's. McDonald's combo. We'll get into that maybe for one of my specials. <laughs> um, so, so he looks great though. And then Fastlane, I guess, is in like two more weeks. I guess that makes sense because it's or two weeks from Sunday should make it. Let's look at the calendar. So it would be Sunday, one, two. So I guess it would be March. Two weeks from this Sunday? It would be either the 3rd or the 10th. Yeah, that seems a really quick turnaround. And, uh, WrestleMania's, I think the first being April. And that's when I get my new Macho Man shirt. It's going to make me happy. But the main event of the evening! We have Kofi Kingston and AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. Oh, by the way, I, f I think I forgot to mention this, but um, because they have, all these men face each other in the elimination chamber, Kofi Kingston came up to AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy were talking. We're like, hey, man, let's look. Like, we had a cool match. Good. And Kofi comes up with the pancake branch. I wonder if that comes from the Waffle House tree. Indeed. So it was Kofi Kingston, AJ Styles, and Jeff Hardy versus Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe, and Randy Orton. And I think the way this match is going to go, whoever won the match would face Daniel Bryan at Fastlane. Yeah. Uh, so Daniel Bryan comes in. He just begins to heals it up. His chest looks like he got hit by a weed whacker, though. I don't, I don't know if that's natural. I don't know if it's that's natural pale skin. And I say that because he's a little bit whiter than 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 I am. Yeah, cause you're gonna see where my watch is. He's like at least ten shades lighter than kind of my watch tan. Which is a lot, a lot whiter than even I am. I think. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not a farmer. Just being in the Florida sun, that sun does get everywhere. So, well. <laughs> but back to this match. Um, he he's just pale looking, and he lives in Phoenix. Phoenix. Two, I think, which is weird. But too much time in that very state of Washington. Even though... What's his face? Little Fettuccini69 claims to be from the Washington area. Never know, he might be thinner and palish, too. So it starts off Daniel Bryan. Uh, actually, it starts off Daniel Bryan's in the ring. He's tagged some mojo. So Samoa Joe versus Kofi Kingston. Good stuff. Again, all the all the faces were working really well together. Even the heels were working pretty well together. Um, eventually Kofi Kingston got Randy Orton, and Randy Orton eventually tagged in. Began to isolate Kofi Kingston. Uh, Kofi Kingston shoved Randy Orton out of the ring. Went to climb the top rope. So, of course, Daniel Bryan shoved him down. Randy Orton dropped him not once, but twice to the announce table. And that announce table is a very sturdy announce table, folks. That table did not break. Uh, was, was that Jeff? No, that was Kofi. Maybe it happened to Jeff once. Thing. And I know Jeff was also... Oh, yeah, no, Kofi did go on the table twice. Jeff was also isolated by the heels. I mean, the way Orton just stomps on body parts. I like that. That's a good heel move. Then I got AJ down and Bryan became a very technical wrestling match. I'll tell you what, that Pele kick of AJ Styles is amazing. Um, then everyone, when everyone got in the ring. Everyone in the pool. And eventually Kofi Kingston 
had a roll-up victory against Daniel Bryan. So Shane comes out. Who should be the winner? Who should face Daniel Bryan at Fastlane? Kofi. Kofi, 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 Kofi Kingston, you are the winner. You get to face down Bryant. And good for Kofi Kingston. He's had a very good career. He's had a good show of it. And he deserved it. More importantly, he won it. He proved he got the win. Man who gets the win gets the match. Makes sense. There's stakes involved. But it's still a heel face dynamic. Good stuff today, WWE. And this was again this was a really fun match. This is not a good surf and turf match. And that was smacked on in a nutshell. It was really good. Um did not carry the stank of Elimination Chamber. Again, the men's Elimination Chamber was fine. Um, Asuka wasn't there. Yeah, that's right. There was no kind of stank of that horrible Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. A really good quality show. And that's it for SmackDown. Um, some programming notes. I will find out tomorrow... If I get to go to NXT Daytona, which means there's going to be more live videos, and we'll see some new rust. We might see some new wrestlers. I highly doubt that Champ is going to be there. I highly doubt Black, Alistair Black, Johnny Gargano, or Ricochet is going to fly or travel three days to come to Daytona Beach. Ain't happening, folks. So we might see some new talent get involved. And I will definitely show you their ring entrances, a little bit of their match, and give you my own commentary and my rating on how those matches go. And then, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a birthday coming up. I should ask. I should have a birthday special. Birthday of Hobo Tom. This is your career retrospective. Wow. That would be neat. Just revisit all, or redo all the, all the great matches of Hobo Tom. Maybe. But we'll see. That's a, that's a, that's a pun. That's a thing about that. See if I know, if I have enough space. Um, also, I'm going to have a, Mardi Gras special. Again, we go back to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling on March the 5th, which is Mardi Gras. Happy Fat Tuesday. So it's going to be a little bit of a party mood. And it's the last day I get to drink. 40 days sober with no meat. I go vegetarian for 40 days. Wow. That's always long. And then on probably not Wednesday because that's Ash Wednesday. But on Thursday, it's going to be the one year celebration of this guy, Hobo Tom, being on YouTube. So I'm going to make a one year celebration video. I think you're going to hear me sing some songs, see some, at least pictures, some stills. Maybe some videos and stuff of that nature to commemorate me being on YouTube for one whole year. I'm surprised I lasted that long. I think I have almost, I think this is also like my 200th video. Wow. I made 200 videos in 365 days. Impressive. Indeed. Oh, and then it's back to the normal schedule. Again, Monday I do try to do Raw unless it's, it's a really weird, wonky work day. But I shall see everyone hopefully Saturday nights.